Arlo, this is a voice recording for you to learn how to use Nomad Sculpt. So this is Nomad Sculpt. This is the size of your brush. This is the size, this is the opacity. Symmetry on off. So if you turn the size down, turn the opacity up, draw. Symmetry, right, left, you can do one side or you can do both sides. This is undo, redo. Um, left finger will move the camera. Two fingers will will uh, change the size. So if I, if I, that's orbit with one finger. Two fingers is pan, two fingers pinch, zoom. Three fingers swipe left and right, moves the light. And four fingers hides the UI. So, kind of like art mode. Um, let's set up our lighting first. So if you go up on the top, you can see this little background thing. This tells you if you can put like a reference image and you can like tweak that background however you like. Um, I tend to not use the background image. I like to use the, the actual 3D scene. This is the blurriness of it. Um, if you want to change which one it's using, click on the light icon. These are the environments that you can use. So you can use like different environments. Um, and if you go to the background here, you can you can tell it to be like blurry or not. So if you turn, you can see like that's the actual background. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I like to use one called Tall Hall, which is this one. Um, and I like to blur the crap out of it because I don't want to see it. And I like to sort of tune its brightness. So this one just makes the background brighter or darker. So I like to give it like a medium gray. The lighting has an exposure one, which tells it how much to reflect or not reflect. Um, I usually do something like point, point three three is my like go to, um, and so let's go ahead and add a light. So if you click on the add light button, I've got a little light here. Um, let's leave it at one. And what I'll do is I'll go into the light, and if I tap on it with my finger, I get a little gizmo. I like to set it so that the light is kind of aiming down so I get like a good, like a neck shadow or a nose shadow. And then I go to the light settings and I click on the color and it says, I have a thing that says uh, camera. So now it's locked to the camera. No matter where I move the camera, it's always aiming down. So it's kind of like a headlight for me. Um, if I click on the clay tool, it, the light still stays there. I don't like having the light there. So if you click on this little gearbox, you can click on the light icon and turn that off. And now, when you click, there's no light. And this is like my happy place to do it. So let's go ahead and talk about, so let's ignore the gizmo and the transform for now. We're just gonna talk about just the move tool. The move tool, if you click and drag on any of them, if you click, if you tap on any of the tools, you have this like save, clone, and reset. I'm gonna reset just so you see what, we see the same thing. There's symmetry on off, normal on off, and smooth. Let's just let it be like in this state. So now we can sort of pull things around. If you want to move something out along its normal, click on the normal, and now it actually moves along the normal of the surface when you drag. Um, if you go up here to the pen tool in the top right, this is the, the fall off, so you can choose different presets. So if I tell it to be like a little round nermy like that, it'll give me like a little bulby, bulbousy thing. If I tell it to do uh, in, you can get like a weird little blorpy blorpy shapes um, during the drag you can also change the way that it treats drag so right now it's on grab but if I tell it to do grab intensity that now the size is going to be entirely controlled by the the brush and then when I click I'm actually telling it how much to pull in and pull out so instead of dragging in an arbitrary direction I'm just telling it to pull and pull out or I can tell it do just the radius and now it'll be whatever this opacity is uh, and the radius will be defined by me, how much I pull it in or out. So it's kind of like a quick and dirty way of like blocking stuff in. Now, if you, if you go to the bottom left here, there's a, a wireframe button and you can see things are getting a little like squirrely with the wireframe. See, like there's like little bulbous things in there. Now, if I, if I want to, I can go and click on this voxel button and it will re-voxelize the entire model. But because those things were interpenetrating, they kind of like made like a problem there. So let's go ahead and undo that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smooth this area out a little bit. So I clicked on the smooth tool and now I'm just smoothing this area a little bit. And if I go to the inflate tool, let's go ahead and reset that so it's the same as yours. Uh, 
I can I can sort of inflate those guys a little bit. And if I also go and smooth this, same thing. Now when I hit voxel, you can see it didn't make that hole. So that's how you, you can fix that. Now now that I voxelized it, you also kind of want to, you can also smooth it up. So if you go to this grid one, you can always subdivide the model a bunch and get more details. Um, turn the wireframe off. So now when we actually sculpt, it gets a little slower, but you get more details. Um, so let's go ahead and grab the... Uh, the crease tool and this gives us the ability to make like little hard edges right and so that's that and this is kind of like your pen tool and it works in negative too so if you tell it to be subtract it can give you little little hard edges which is good for like cloth folds or things that you want to make it look like it melts you can always tune how it behaves with the pen so this is like the brush uh, radius and intensity sizes. I've tuned the hell out of mine. So if you go to, so if you click this gray button, I can show you two. All these little orange ones are my personal ones. So like this is my slash brush that I've tuned the fuck out of. Um, another couple things that I'll show you here. So first things first, this default material sucks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab like a regular material. So I grab a color and notice that as I adjust the color, the entire model changes. And if I turn the roughness down, it gets shinier. If I turn the metalness down, it gets more and more like, you know, pearlescent or metal. So that's like a good material. So then if I say force paint all, it's all that material. Or if I do this one, it's all this material. I don't know what's going on. Oh, because the paint intensity is not all the way up. There you go. So let's grab our material. Give it a little bit more roughness. That's good. Okay, so now if I go want to go through and like, let's show you how to customize a brush. Um, so I'm gonna go grab the move tool. Um, so this is the move tool as we as we see it. So I like the fact that it's doing that little uh, fall off there, but let's go ahead and modulate that with a texture instead. So I'm gonna tell the the fall off type to just be 100% hard. So now it's just like a solid. C circle and now I'm going to tell it to modulate that through a texture. So this is like a texture that you paint in Procreate or that you paint in whatever painting program that you like. I use Art Studio Pro. Um, and so now I've got a texture that's like a texture of a bolt. And so there's like a texture of a bolt. And if I turn the opacity down, it's a little bit of a flatter bolt, right? Now, because we're inside a 3D painting tool and everything that we paint can have color on it, it's a good idea to sort of like use colors when you paint. So if I tell this to be blue, the bolt is now blue. But you see how it fades off there? I want it to be 100%. That's because it's using the stroke alpha. This is the these are the this is the pressure, this is the brush settings, this is the paint settings, this is the the pressure settings. If you go to the brush settings on the very bottom of brush settings it says use stroke alpha. If I turn that off, now it's going to be 100% whatever the stroke alpha is. Now, you see how the, it's it's got that little it's not the same because our 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 alpha doesn't co comes in a little bit. So what we need to do is we need to modify this alpha. So if we click on custom and we set this to be zero here and then 100% up here, it'll actually look a little bit more appropriate. That's a little too far. So let's go ahead and uh, soften that a little bit. Maybe harden it up a little bit. How about like that? That looks pretty good. All right, so now if I turn this material to be like a metal, or a shiny chrome, now if I want this to be brighter, I could go to the um, the light environment here and I could turn the exposure up. You see how it's affecting the, the amount that it reflects? And depending on which one I'm showing, that's what, that's what gets reflected, right? So, Maybe not that, maybe not that chrome ball. Let's do like a, uh, that one's going in. I want to... So if you ever want to, if you ever find yourself ever wanting to, to pick a color and be like, Hey, I, I like the one that I've got. Take your finger, hold, and it'll give you an eyedropper so you can you can quickly eyedrop a previous one. If you go up here to this little post effects one, 
you can turn on the ambient occlusion and this is how much it like gets dark in the crevices. I like to kind of like monkey with it a little bit um, at the beginning of my sculpt to try to give me like a good sense of there you go. So now if I go in and grab like the our crease tool, you can see that it's got the we're getting like a, we're getting like an ambient occlusion accentuation in there. see what else we got uh so let's go ahead and give it some some normal texture so this 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 is our this is our bolt tool so i'm going to click on this and say save oh no no i don't want to save that i want to clone it clone it and call it bolt voila and now at the very bottom here i've got bolt if you want to delete it you can just say remove um i'm going to have actually i'm going to i'm going to click on this one and i'm going to clone it i'm going to call this one uh, skin and instead of on skin here I'm going to tell the texture to be the regular texture and I'm going to tell its material instead of being that bolt I've got some textures that I've previously pulled up that I know are good so I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to go ahead and tell the fall off to be a preset a normal one that's good and I'll tell the opacity to be down and that's good and I tell it to be a subtraction so right now it's set to move which is probably not the best one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one and I'm gonna go to I think I'm gonna go to the paint tool maybe actually I'll maybe try the clay tool so I'm gonna work from the clay tool and I'm going to make a duplicate of the clay tools and I say clone, skin, and now I've got this skin tool here and I'm going to tell it, okay, there's the normal clay and I want you to use the skin texture, perfect, and I want it to be a little bigger and I want it to grab the intensity, that's good. I don't want to do a subtraction. And I think I don't want to do intensity. I think I want to do radius instead. Yeah, that's good. I'll turn the opacity down. That's good. And maybe I'll have it paint a little bit of a uh, same color, but just a little bit black. Or maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit more opaque and a little bit more red. That's good. Maybe turn the uh, the amount that it paints down. That's good. And maybe a different texture. No, that's, I've got a I've got a little pockmark skin one that I like. Where's that one? This one's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's killer. Let's give it a little bit better fall off. Um, Do like a soft power fall off. Yeah, that's good. And let's turn the uh, amount that it paints down. Yeah, that's killer. Now you see how it's getting on those screws? If I want to, I can say mask, and then it'll allow me to paint out those areas. Um, and then I can say like unmask to. to to get like a tuned up edge. And then when I turn off mask, it's only painting in the area that's unmasked. So if I go to mask and I say mask clear, it didn't paint on the, on the bolt. Turn off mask. And turn off sub. And if I want to give it a better color, I can tell it to paint those ones blue. And that's kind of that. Um, I also just kind of tend to do a little bit of I, I do a little bit of work where I have like um, if you go to the if you go to the the regular um, paint tool here, 
So this allows you to just paint with regular paint, but the, it leaves the sculpture alone. And you can tune that so that, again, you can make yourself like fall off brushes and stuff. So like, um, where's my give me a, a airbrush in here? There's a splat tool. Um, and I've, I've spent some time tuning those. So like I've got ones here that are like, here's one that's called quill that allows me to like do like line art. Um, so if I give it like a black, you can see like it's, it's nice like that. That's my quill. Um, I also have one that's like a regular brush. So, um, let's see what else I got. Um, I've also got, so you can, you want to kind of go through and make sure that these are set up. So like this one says global material or, um, different stuff. This one is my airbrush tool. So airbrush is kind of like, um, if I want to add a brush, this is my airbrush texture. Let's go grab the material like a gold. I've also got a scatter one. The scatter one is kind of like, I'll grab a darker color so you can see it. Um, anyway, same kind of stuff where you can color pick and all that stuff. One of the things that's kind of cool is that if you go through and you want to experiment with color, what I like to do is I'll go and make a layer and layers can record just color. So now I'm painting in this layer and I can go through and be like, okay, I want to paint a bunch of black speckles and stuff. Then I can go into the layer tool and I can turn the opacity of that layer on and off. And that works for color, but it also works for, um, for uh, sculpting. So if I turn my sculpting on here, there's, there's my sculpt. And if I tell it to, it's gonna sculpt a little bit blue. If I go to the layer, you can see it's turning on and off the sculpt as well. So that's how people make like facial targets and stuff. And if you want to flatten it, you just click the flatten button and it's back to the normal model. Um, I think that's probably a good place to stop right there. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Um, yeah, man. I can't wait to see what you make. Oh, uh, three finger swipe. There you go. All right, bud. Love you. Good luck. Oh, by the way, if you ever want to share your screen, swipe down from the top right. Make sure you have screen enabled turned on, and that will allow you to to record the screen. If you do a long press, you can turn on the microphone.